Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of iPrint 3D and today we're talking about Lychee Slicer updates 5.3.2 and 5.4 and the reason I'm doing these as a combined episode is because I completely just kind of missed one of those update episodes a month ago and we're just trying to play catch up. Sorry about that. We're going to go over all the changes that have been applied to Lychee since 5.3.2 and then we'll cover over some of the um, actual visual stuff that is being kind of like, you know, rehashed in these updates. In the version 5.3.2, you may have noticed some updates that have actually made things a little bit nicer visually. There's that nice little white outline that you can see around the objects. Very cool. Um, the selected object now has a white outline. This is actually uh, toggleable using the gear icon in the upper right hand corner of Lychee Slicer right beneath the camera box um, where the home button is uh, over in the right corner. Yeah, you, you, you'll find it. The gear icon, when you click on that, it will give you a little uh, menu that allows you to toggle on and off some of these visual options. Um, there's wireframe mode, flip camera, all that other stuff. And some of that has been there. But the new stuff is selection outline. And there's also a new overhang mode uh, that has uh, been added that allows you to change the color of the overhangs to its usual checkered yellow and blue pattern to the now... Um, uh, red it's like a red just like a boom like it kind of looks like chitu box almost uh, Some of the other slicers use red as well So if you're more comfortable with this and you prefer just seeing like the red shaded everywhere rather than the yellow checker box um, This is a, a new a new option that you can visually toggle as of 5.3.2 um, There's a couple other uh, things that they've added as well with this one. This was a little bit larger of an update um so we also have uh, removal of suction cups by using one click. Um, will not fill the suction cups, but it will remove the suction cup detections. Um, every filament settings now have their own explanation image, which is nice if you're using FDM. Cloud notification system for updated 3D printer uh, resin and filament settings have been updated. Notifications will now pop up directly on your printer and printer settings, allowing you to choose whether or not to use the latest cloud settings or just keep your current parameters. Um, the move tool now has a sub palette to gain access directly to all of its sub tools, uh, which is good. It makes it easier. The lift function has been added to the move tool sub palette, which is also convenient. So you can simply click lift and it will pop your model up five millimeters off the plate. Uh, new preference has been added to enable auto lift on import and it is disabled by default, but I highly recommend turning it on because there are so many times where I will forget to do that before I start set adding supports and then I go back and go, man, this looks fun. Oh, I forgot to lift it. Oops. <laughs> and then you just wind up having to kind of redo a couple of things. But anyway, you get the idea. That's a nice function. Um, there's, a only, uh, there's also some other features here that they've noted. The models with holes in their 3D structure will, dis will de be displayed in red to avoid confusion. The repair tool still displays all the structural issues, but without switching the models in red. Uh, the projection support border offset parameter is now linked to the support presets themselves, like what you preset, to compute the best offset possible. And this is actually better than it was because I think you just had to go in and tweak it on your own while you were messing around with it. We'll kind of go over that as well um, in this video as well. We'll show you some of these things as we're kind of talking about them. Um, and let's see, there are some more improvements and optimizations that I have made, uh, that they have made with the software working with 3d projects, um, that have a lot of supports will be a lot faster. Um, and I have actually worked with a few of my older files that I felt had some performance issues and they do perform a little bit better. There's a lot, lot smoother moving, um, the, you know, the clipping and things like that seems to have been improved a lot. So there are a lot of optimization things that have been done. Uh, to make the software smoother. They have also added some additional filament and resin printers, which I will read off to you here in case you guys are curious. We got the Apex Maker X1, the Cool Siga Finder 136, Piopoli Phenom Noir upgrade to 7K, Frozen Mega 8KS, Frozen Mighty upgrade to 12K. We've also got some filament printers that have added, added to their list, the GTEC Rostock Mini G2, Mini G2S, Mini G2S Pro, the Rostock 301, MakerBot Z18, Creality Ender 3 version 3, Soval SV07 Plus, any Cubic Cobra Series 2, all the way from Pro to Neo, the Soval SV02, uh, the LotMax SC20, LotMax Shark Max, Shark V1, Shark V2, CraftBot Flow, 
Flow XL, Flow IDEX, Flow IDEX XL, and Flow Wide XL, as well as just the gener general craft bot filament printer. And that is all the printers that have been added as of 5.3.2. There are some additional ones that were added in 5.4. Uh, filament seems mostly filament printers that were added. The Anchor Make M5C, the Elegoo Neptune 4 Plus, the Elegoo Neptune 4 Max, the Prusa Mini IS, the Prusa Mini Plus IS, the Tractus 3D T1250, and the Tractus 3D T3000, as well as the WUXN WXR. Ha! Huh, those are some names to spell out, huh? So with version 4, this was a minor update. Uh, version 3 was more of a major update that had a lot more in it. And version 4 didn't have as much uh, as far as the actual improvements and updates go. Uh, there are some minor updates for the G-code uh, fix for Soval's SV07 and SV07+. Plus. Apparently that was an issue there, so they have now fixed that G-code start. Uh, Wi-Fi support has been added for 3D printers equipped with Chitu Box mainboard, Apex Maker X1, Elegoo Saturn 3 Ultra, Elegoo Mars 4 Ultra. So you now have some Wi-Fi support there. That's a very cool option they've added. Personally, I don't use the Wi-Fi support very much, but if you do use that stuff and it is something you like to use, there you go. Good to know that they're still working on those things as well. Optional and skippable ads when slicing for pro users related to 3D printing. Um, so there you go. Those are the major updates that have been done in 5.3.2 as well as 5.4. Um, now as I'm kind of goofing off here, just doing different models as I'm showing you some of these different features, I kind of wanted to take a minute to talk about our channel. We have um, grown quite a bit and we're practically at the point where we're reaching almost a thousand subs, which doesn't sound like a lot, but honestly for my small little community, this is pretty cool and we're really happy to see the channel grow. I'm super happy to see a lot of you have stayed around since the beginning, and I appreciate every single one of you that leaves comments, asks questions, and honestly gives us suggestions for what we need to do for more channel stuff. We have redesigned the brand, and we've rebranded the channel a little bit, so you'll notice there's a bit of a different intro, and that's going to stay now. We've stabilized what we want to do with it, and yes, we are officially a lychee. Uh, brand ambassador. So the only slicer software we're probably going to be talking about from now until a long time is going to be Lychee Slicer. But for most of you, I know some of y'all found me due to the fact that I am talking about Lychee Slicer. So I don't really feel that that was going to be an issue. What we do want to talk about though is that there's going to be some additional content added to the channel as well that isn't necessarily related to the 3D printing world. It's going to be more or less related to the mini world and that's because we're getting more into the design and painting side of things and I have an artist that's working with me and we're trying to make some really amazing stuff based on some of the sculpts and models that we've been creating over the last year. So again, sit tight. Strap in because we have a lot more content coming and the channel is just going to continue to grow. So for those of you that have been supporting us, thank you so much. We really do appreciate you. And for those of you that are new, welcome. And we thank you too because the channel needs you too. We need to grow and we need to, um, we need to make this 3D printing community a bigger community that can share and help each other. And when you hit dead ends and you find things that you can't fix, you need to be able to ask somebody. And unfortunately, you know... In the world of 3D printing, there aren't a whole lot of people out there that are just willing to give you help for free. And there's, you know, there's a decent amount of YouTube guys like me who do tutorials and lessons. We've got the guys at, you know, Table Flip. They do a lot of cool YouTube videos. They have a whole section of tutorials. We have 3D Printing Pro, Greg. He's a great guy. He did tons of this stuff way before I was even on YouTube and kind of inspired me to do what I do. So, you know, there's, there's those folks. You even got Uncle Jesse who likes to you know, do his thing as well. And I love all those guys. Those guys inspired me to do what I do. And, uh, you know, here we are. So anyway, as we kind of go along here, I was demonstrating, as you noticed a minute ago, some of the projection supporting and stuff. And I want you all to kind of pay attention to that too. But I also wanted to mention just some things about the channel. So again, really appreciate y'all joining us for this. And um, we're going to try to do more frequent update stuff like this when Leechy does announce updates, because we're going to try and stay on top of that what they're doing with it. And now that we're part of the ambassador program, I feel that we'll also have a leg up on that as well. Um, if y'all are interested, we do have a couple of models that are coming uh, to the group on Discord for the Lychee Slicer. So if you are a member of that group, um, I believe we do have some models that uh, they're going to be uh, given away 
uh, from our collection. So I, I believe the Nuka Cola Girl might be one of those. So stay tuned for that because I think that's going to be a nice giveaway for y'all if y'all are interested in printing her out yourselves. Um, and that's pretty much it as far as the updates go. They didn't really have a, a big, huge list of optimization updates for 5.4. But I just loaded the update yesterday for <clears throat> all of this. And to be honest, the program is working better for me. It's smoother. The, op the optimizations seem to be really, really good. Um, there have been some improvements with inline painting. Uh, there have been improvements with, uh, sorry, the inline supports and the support painting as well. So that all seems to be a lot smoother as, as well, and I didn't mention that um, earlier. Um, even the creation of supports themselves will feel a little bit faster um, when you're doing it and working in the, in the uh, software. So I, I feel like that's, um, these are all good things. The software is getting beefier, it's getting more powerful, we're getting more support for the printers that we use, and I think overall this is just great. So... Thank the guys at Mango because they're doing a fantastic job with this software. Lychee is amazing. Thank you all for making this. To be honest, my slicing life was terrible before I found this software. So thank you guys so much for this. Anyway, that is it for today's episode. Thank you all for watching the update episode. These are kind of boring sometimes, I know. But we want to go over all the updates that do come out. And want to make sure that you guys know about all the new functionality before you go ahead and hit that update button. And if you're curious... Um, you can actually update your software by clicking on your uh, little person icon in the corner there. And under the general tab, you'll find some information on how to update your software. Or you can go directly to Mango's website and download the latest package there and just reinstall it over your old one. Anyway, guys, that's it for today. Thanks again for watching. Appreciate y'all so much. You have no idea. See you all again very, 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 very soon.